Welcome to the show, everyone. This is Ming Li Chao here, and I'm with Patrick Helton, and we are here to talk about whatever we want on Random Tuesday. <laughs> Random Tuesday slash Wednesday, because it is past midnight now. We are into the Wednesday area, that's for sure. Thanks for having me on the show, Ming. It's a pleasure to be here. No problem, Patrick. And the topic for today is what captivates you and what motivates you in the real world and how are you going to get into it? My answer to that question is more of a two-part answer. I think, one, everybody is motivated by one universal thing nowadays, which I don't necessarily agree with to pe for people to be motivated by, and that thing is money. And whether I like it or not, I'm stuck in a perpetual system where I need money to survive, I need money to live, and that's just unfortunate. And number two, I said it was a two-part answer. Number two, uh, all men are motivated by this. I think you know where I'm going with this topic, but you gotta love them women. Gotta love them women. Anyway, that's my answer uh, to your first question, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everyone should have their right motivations if it's used in a very positive, that doesn't hurt everyone, and use it in a way that um, increases your personality, makes you a better person, and that should be everyone's goal. And they should be happier, live livelier every single day, and make sure their lives are filled with good people and not influenced by dark things and bad things around the world, right? Absolutely. It's all about uh, what resources you have available and how you use those resources to better your not only your life, but the lives of people around you. Um, the thing is, uh, how I use my, say, monetary resources, I'm using them to go to school right now, and that is basically all I spend it on. Now, I do have vices like alcohol, um, but, I mean, I, I don't excessively uh, drink alcohol, say. I don't excessively go out and party with my friends. Uh, you, all, you have to do it in moderation, or else you start hurting the people around you with, you know, diseases like alcoholism. Um... And, and, and just a bunch of factors like that. Um, but what I'm basically trying to say is uh, the way that you use the things that you have available to you really defines you as a person and defines uh, who you are uh, and who you want to become, uh, more importantly. Mm -hmm. That's very important because you're defined by the things around you, your personality depends on who you learn from with, and your motivation depends on the inspirations that from everyone else that around you, your parents, your inspirators, your teachers, and just the little things you find on the internet and that are positive and warming. And as you said, there are certain things like money that is very important in our lives that motivates people to get. Uh, and I think it's a very positive goal to get these um money and get these women and stuff and I think it's pretty funny that you brought that up but here's another perspective for you um sometimes when I feel money can't buy anything can't buy everything like your happiness and stuff and it's not bad to have money like we have their, or, or, or like our student loan to pay off or courses to pay off but what if societies go off without money like like imagine a world without money and see like where society actually go from here right well i think it, it, for a lot of people it's it's tough to try and imagine a world like that where there's no uh, money or kind of currency uh, a lot of people kind of have this uh, view of maybe having no currency but the resources that are available to you and by resources in this term i mean your livestock or what you produce yourself, your uh, your chickens, your farm animals, your wheat, your grains, like everything else like that. Um, but in, in that, we go back to a bartering society. And in a bartering society, it's a lot, um, I want to say it's based off of what you can sell to someone else. There's no baseline currency uh, in a bartering society. So when you, I'm trying to, say, sell you um, a peanut butter, like peanut butter for your toast, you don't like eating dry toast, I'm sure. Nobody, I don't think anybody likes eating dry toast. Um, but the thing is, 
if I see that you have dry toast and no resources available for you to butter that toast and I have peanut butter, I can sell that peanut butter to you or I, I use sell loosely, but I can sell peanut butter to you in a much more um, um, at more demand. So what I'm what I think the point I'm trying to make is no matter if we get rid of currency or if we get rid of um, any kind of uh, system like that basic concepts will still shine through like supply and demand um, and I, I think that's basically where I wanted to go with that with uh, that point about the peanut butter mm, yes <laughs> very important um, I would like to say that yes supply and demand is important because people want food to survive and and we want a variety of food, right? There's different like styles of, like different species of apples. Like we, we well, we're so picky. Like we want this apple, and it's all driven by market demand. If you think about it, so as a result, we our society have to grow so many variety of food, and sometimes you gotta grow them in a very huge fashion, and then and, and then sometimes it could be unsustainable, could be sustainable depending on how you grow the food. So as a result, there's a constant need for supply and demand when we are all humans and we need to uh, like uh, eat food to live. So as a result, we have to ingest food. And supply and demand will go on and on and on until sometime in the future. Yeah, well, absolutely. I have no... Um I have no uh, quarrels with that concept of the supply and demand, like I was saying. Um, but if I, I feel like what you were getting at there was if we uh, kind of scaled back our uh, greediness, as I want to say it, our greediness as of all the different kinds of foods, you used the apples as an example, um, maybe we could scale back the supply and demand issue. So say if everybody just decided that they liked green apples we wouldn't have all these other species of apples we would be able to focus on how do we most efficiently grow these green apples how do these green apples get to us in a way that's really quickly uh quickly accessible and that people can have the most um access i've used the access quite a bit but uh the most access to these green apples well then if I want to relate that to my peanut butter topic, if we all kind of learned to eat dry toast, we wouldn't have this supply and demand concept. Um, now you get right to the root of it, and well, people still need toast, right? Uh, and, and that's always going to be there. But the fact that if we only need one thing or something to sustain us in everyday life i think that it get, it be, it becomes um i'm missing the word uh but it becomes a lot simpler or uh more efficient to live as humans and as uh, a global society would kind of dictate we live because right now there is a huge gap in uh where we are in different societies like uh, I would argue that uh, Western culture has become very consumerism and capitalist, whereas, I mean, most other parts of the world, and I'm not educated very well on this, but mo a lot of other parts of the world are just striving to get by or trying to get by day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I think if we all learn to eat dry toast, that might not happen as much. Mm, very interesting. And I think... Um, uh, you have you have touched something there, and I want to add to your con concept of um dry toast. Like um, in my field, obviously we think about the most sustainable way to live, sustainable way to grow plants, way to con conservation and stuff. And it's very important to consider about how long your toast will last, like your wheat and supply demand of, of that toast, and how we make that toast, toast and what fashion we we make that toast, right? Uh, I'm just, there is a little bit of saying like, what if people want variety? What if people are picky? You're, you're like, if you want to scale that back, people will be like, we want a revolution now because we're our freedom of choice of different toasts. And if you think about that, 
it would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, we're trying to make it easier for you. Then you're trying to make it harder for us. So it's like, I think that there have to be a balance to be achieved between the consumers and the, 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 the demand people. So as a result, we, we need to, as well as scale back, but have a compromising way so that everyone can reach their goal. In a, and also, like, yes, people are too much on, on, on consumerism and we have to scale back, right? But why don't we just stop fighting people, other people, for other resources when we can trade safely with other people and make sure that resources can be actually traded um, so that um, everyone can have the food that they want and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. And there are resources around the world that I think uh, b people in more powerful situations have kind of been strong arming, and that's and that's almost going back to uh, what I said about the supply and demand. The original thing about the dry toast and peanut butter is people with a lot of peanut butter see people with dry toast around the world, and they they go, "Well, I have all the leverage right now. I can." sell this peanut butter to these people at a, at, at, a, at a small cost to myself and get so much in return. And that itself just unbalances the system. And we really, we do need to, we need to make a change on that. That's just imperative that we find a way for people to get peanut butter in their lives so they can butter their toast. Yes, very interesting because you touch upon the greed thing because that is like the most deadliest thing in our society. Like, yes, money is, but greed is what we drive us to make more money, screw people over on the next country over. And, you know, it's just very, very hard. But sometimes greed is important. It's a male motivator for a better life. I, 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 I want to earn myself that car, but I'm, I'm going to get it through my own means right but sometimes if you do it wrong and do it like not moderately but like exponentially greed over like resources and final i think personally think that human motion or that aspect of hu human aspect should be changed and if we start uh, to not become greedy or become over consumed with, with uh, like consumerism and stuff and just um, try to live a happy life without like the the mind of the media like telling us what to buy and stuff and stuff and then just go on and just living as far well as possible with, without damaging the environment without screwing people over without doing anything that what people don't want us to do but as well as be yourself right absolutely and that is why coming back to the whole we ca we came almost full circle yeah. on this that is why it's almost bad that so many people, myself included, in a today's society where you have to go to school, get a high-paying job in order to succeed in life, that's why that's almost, almost not a good thing. It's great to get an education, don't get me wrong. Everybody should be educated and learn as much as they can. Um, but the fact that people are using this knowledge uh, to their advantage is just it's not necessarily a good thing for the world as a whole um all these motivating factors like what i touched on at the start i will cite myself at the start of this interview um i said i believe i said money and women were the the things that motivated me and honestly i can use all the resources i have to get just money and women but if you only do that, then that that essentially makes you a bad person. And I, I, I would not personally use all the resources I have just to get money and women. Because one can lead to the other, and we all know how money can lead to women, and that is just not something... Um, that really should be and and that's a that's a topic for a different discussion, whether prostitution should be legal or illegal. Um, because yeah, feminism, I think a woman should do, a woman should do what she wants with her body, and if that woman decides that prostitution is the thing that she wants to do, then whatever. I mean, she can make that choice, but it goes to the men or women, whatever, pro LGBT. I don't even, I couldn't 
pronounce the acronym right now if I tried, but um, if if they want to, that's cool with me. And um, I think I got way off topic here, but the point is, I'm coming around full circle now, and the way you use the resources available to you in today's society is much more important than how much resor- how many resources you can allocate to yourself. Mm, very, very true. Um, I and lastly, I want to touch about the bartering system and stuff that we went full circle, and then I there was a uh, a group in South Africa who was starting a new kind of way of living, um, way of treating each other, how rethink education is being done and and rethink the economy and how it could be done but this is like a form of socialism but it's not really socialism because you're also giving your free of choice of of doing whatever you want but you gotta find your own passion within the community so once you find that passion you can do it right so this is um, this is called the, uh, the Ubuntu uh, Corporation or uh, the community in uh, one of the guy in South Africa was trying to promote is when you have a group of people in a community, you work, you do different things. Like for example, you, you um, plant, you do infrastructure, you do all the different topics and then you teach your students in a way that you hone them to a certain subject that they're really passionate on and make sure they are masters at that particular subject. It's like university, but um, each year in high school, starting high school, you get to do different sets of topic until you actually reach your goal of your master and one particular job. Say like if you're good at nuclear engineering, you can go into there and you're like really passionate about or you can go into math or agriculture and it's and it's just up to you right but um but you got to contribute to the community because uh you don't have really have the concept of really money and all because you can self sustain your your community but that is a little bit of like the future plans of that that particular style of community but once you scale it back down to the first stuff you have a like a group of a thousand people and you you start grow, growing plants you make three times the amount that you actually need to sustain yourself and then you sell it for a very low price at, at the market so that everyone would come by yourself but then people realize if we do it our other communities realize if we do it ourselves we can su- sustain ourselves and actually trade with other people and and if they make three times the, as much things that they actually need and they make three actually they actually need and they can just trade on what, what, what they don't have and then self-sustain their community that way like provide their basic needs if everyone catches on because of the low prices of when they first started boom 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 you get everyone to to of, of course there's like greedy people but once you get still going the, the 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 society definitely perpetuates itself and makes sure that everyone gets the way they want. And obviously, there's greedy people out there. So I'm trying to make that is, is what if there's an alternative way of society that governs money or trade in a different way so that we can all benefit. I think that's a very interesting concept. Um, I would I would also add that. Um, this kind of society would have to be brought about, um, I'd say, in a remote location. Like, I mean, it, I mean, it, it, if you wanted to start it somewhere where uh, there's no current laws imposed, I think that would be a very interesting, say, social experiment where you make up a society of these people who are um, very specialized in their fields, but just in one field, but the whole society itself um specializes in every single field there might be a few specialists in just one but a lot in another i think it could still happen because these specialists would be able to uh complete a wide array of, um or spectrum of different jobs or careers or uh, facets of everyday life that eventually make up 
uh, one whole everyday life. So if you have 1,000 people in a society, then you can break up um, one person's everyday life into 1,000th or 999 ths because that one person needs to be adjusted for, correct? And um, I think as you grow as a society, you need to understand that there's a certain point where there's just too many, there, there's a lot of people, and there's just too many people to make it one one thousandth of a society or uh, one two thousandth of a society. And that's when I think that the trading would come in um, into effect. And because you can't keep growing your own society to make it one one thousandth of a life, you can you can still have more people in the society, um, but you need to start trading with other societies to uh, or other um, other groups of people to keep your um, own fraction of life at one one thousandth. So if you trade one one thousandth with another civilization with one one thousandth maybe they value some things higher than other things. Then uh, if you want more than one one thousandth of a society, you can get it from this other society. And I'm trying to uh, avoid capitalist tendencies, obviously, um, because they seem to not be working in a global uh, economy. And, it, th and there's a balance to be had with not wanting to you know, get too far into the socialist um, aspect of things. But when you start trading fairly and evenly between things that you have more of and things that you don't have more of, or that you have less of, ooh, don't have more of, um, that you have less of, then you start to equalize societies in ways that uh, I just think that modern civilization, you just can't do it. You just, it's, it's impossible with the you know, trade regulations and everything that's um, imposed on us in today's society. Mm. You're absolutely right. Um, as I said, I think this will be a good um, social experiment for like a small group of people. And I think the organization or the group is or on its working stages to, to do that. And I think that um, I hope the best, but I, I have my doubts of that particular side because um, you're assuming that everyone's rational and happy within that society. And I think it will be a good society, but this will have to depend on the timing and how we view it and how the media view it. And yeah, so. um, yeah and, and that's where a governing body comes in. You can have a society um, without a governing body in theory, but there always has to be something to regulate it. Uh, unfortunately, that's where we've essentially gone wrong as society. When we've, or as a society, when the people in um, power start to abuse that power and start to give different kinds of uh, special treatment to certain facets of everyday life. So, if I'm using the example again um, of the culture being a one one thousandth kind of culture, so every there are 1,000 people and every one person has 1 1,000th of the responsibility of the society, then uh, we start to get, uh, when a governing body comes into place, that's where we start to get where the one of the people um, starts to get more um, responsibility associated with their job. So uh, in today's society, I would say that it's uh, big corporations like, say, oil we have a lot of need for oil right now, or quote unquote demand for oil, and the government seems to place a bigger um, a bigger emphasis on our need for oil, where maybe as a group of people living together, as a culture, we might not need that as much as we say need food or clean water. And it's unfortunate that things that are trivial, like oil, are being uh, emphasized as opposed to clean water and groceries. And, and I say groceries, so that I can just buy them at the store, but they grow in the ground. Farmers are uh, busting their ass and getting just 
just barely getting by while people in like high living are they just made their nut off oil they just happen to get lucky or whatever i don't i don't necessarily know but i think it's unfortunate that people aren't being treated evenly in society not saying that everybody should be treated evenly but i think everybody who works hard should essentially get enough money for their their hardships mm. and be able to understand that or and and people should be able to understand where it's coming from and not like you're just doing a menial task in today's um, rat race or whatever you want to call it and, and i mean like you you shouldn't just get paid for doing nothing is what i'm trying to say kim kardashian whatever yeah you're absolutely right like this is our society now and there's big problems uh and it's very hard to fix those things when the higher ups makes the policies and the laws and like the when they get the final say right you can make as much as laws you want but who gets the final say and who's controlling that final say and who's um like regulating that final say so it's very important to think about policies and laws when you think about how to change really change how with the way people think really change how people react to different things and really change how we think about our food our sustainability on this earth and um our and our survival as a human species because if you because if we change perspectives like we change from like from um here to like dogs and see like uh from the gods but we're like oh there's so many people on this uh, earth and stuff like uh, like uh, they probably think we're destroying the earth because there's not a lot of food for them or like with like uh, endangered species like polar bears and stuff so like if you think about like from their perspective what would they see like what if we're in their shoes how will we, we feel then or how we, would we feel in a fir- uh, like a third world country people like people from the third world country like how would we feel because we were born differently we were coming different like it's just very hard to know like our roots in society and like how do we should go and how e- equality should be made but the problem is we have to change our consciousness on the way we think mentally on how you're gonna think this change or then then um the these bills will be meaningless so yeah and and it's it's uh, for a lot of people it's tough to uh get into the head of somebody in you like you said like the third world or uh an endangered species like the polar bear or um anybody who has been born differently say and it's it, it's very impossible to just understand why uh like why they've been born into this or uh why they've understood this and we're uh, obviously assuming um the consciousness of like polar bears um but if i was a polar bear i think and i had consciousness space exploration would be my biggest bet because these people have been ruining my habitat for so many years i want to get out of here like this is not a good environment and um extrapolating that concept to somebody in in essentially the third world like they they want to get out of there like it they don't it doesn't make sense to them why um anybody would do this to their earth or to be exploiting them like this um and it's i don't and education again we come back to education is the problem because they're not they they can't uh, like educate themselves they just uh, somebody needs to be able to kind of almost hold their hand and and make sure that they can fight for themselves or they make sure they can think for themselves um and think differently and i mean i I say think differently but it's really we're the ones who need to think differently about things in order to help them right and honestly polar bears space exploration they could navigate the challenger space shuttle i'm sure they would have done a better job than we did because we don't know a lot of different things and what if there's uh, if we step in someone's shoes, who might think differently from that particular angle than our angle, and there's because there's so so many different perspectives out there, it's just it's interesting for us to see how um, one thing could be another, and another thing could be another, 
and you might view as one thing as bad and the left and the other person might think oh this is great right so you got to think about different perspectives on how it affects us completely and it's and i think we're out of time here but i uh you got any final words to say uh, basically um we we as a society have to think about uh different things uh ways essentially to do things differently and especially when it comes to right down to it the fact that we all want to be rich we all want to be liked um but in order to do that you need to use your resources wisely and um not hoard all the peanut butter all right mm. you're absolutely right and i think that there has to be a a change in our perception of things and get up this current paradigm and just go to another newer paradigm so that everyone will be um, treated more equally than they're treated now and have a positive impact on this world. Well, um, that's it for our podcast. Um, thank you, uh, Patrick, for being here and I have a wonderful talk. Thanks for having me on, Ming. It was a, it was a pleasure. Mm, yes, and we'll see you next time.